Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Mnix Plays Path of Exile, Breach League Hardcore. Um today we have we have quite a few things that we need to get done. Let's, let's start the day off with a Xana mission. Um I'm still looking for some like decent unaid Stay maps. Spe specifically, I'm looking for let's see, look at our ch let's look at our challenge real quick. I I believe I'm looking for tier yeah, tier 3 unaid and tier 6 onwards. Um, currently, Xana is holding a tier 4 unaided, which Still we have already exactly. done. So, uh, I guess we're going to be doing another one instead. We want to find a map, complete another map mission, uh, master mission. That's not too bad. Um, shouldn't be too hard. So, as you can see, what are the mods here? Totems, skeletons. It, it is a pretty easy map. But... It, it, if you notice, we're like one-shotting things, um, or for the most part we are, and the reason for that is I switched a lot of things around. Uh, one of our users, or one of our, I, I guess, viewers, um, commented and pointed out to me that since I'm using point blank, it, it means I can really take advantage of the chin soul bowl, uh, so that's the bow I'm using right now, instead of line ice glare. Um, so basically what the chin soul does is that uh, it does 100% more bow damage at close range. And close range is basically the same range as point blank. So point blank is 50% more damage at the start of their movement. Um, so basically with chin soul, we basically have 150% uh, point blank. Uh, only, only when you know we're close by, but since we're using this gem anyways, we're going to try to be as close by as possible. And we're dropping the totems really close by to uh, enemies anyways. Now, by doing this, um, essentially we've increased our damage enough so that I don't feel too bad about monsters that are further away not dying as quickly. Um, we can just drop the totem in front of them. And what I've also done is I have finally gotten rid of my Cragfall. I didn't really want to do this, but... The clear speed difference was too big with the drill neck, and not only that, with the drill neck, um, I think losing the what was it like 25, 26 percent, 24 percent enemy stun threshold, uh, it doesn't make up for the fact that we're getting 100 percent more damage with the drill neck, plus 10 to 22 physical damage, and life and attack speed and all that good stuff. Um, so the damage actually makes up for the stun threshold and you know we didn't want to be in a spot where like it does it doesn't matter how high the stun threshold is if we can't do damage anyways right um so wait why is this enduring cry right now there we go so now that we have enough damage um for the most part when we f we basically just kill white mobs and it's only when we fight the yellow mobs and the bosses that we actually, you know, have a chance of stunning. Which is basically how I want it to go anyways. When we fight a boss, we have to make sure that we at least pop a flask so we can trigger Doriani's invitation. Um, and then with that, we'll be sitting at around 96%, I believe, stun threshold reduction. 96% um, isn't that bad. I mean, it's no 114, which is what we had before. Or no, 96 plus 24. That's We had 130? We had quite a bit. Wow. 120. We had 120 before, um, but now we're sitting at 96. Now, it is a little low, um, but because we got so much damage now, uh, together with, you know, with point blank and chinsel and everything, that I'm actually feeling pretty good about the whole thing in general. Like as you can see, we're just really taking down bosses, um, and uh, or yellow mobs at least. You know, they're they're pretty much getting one or two shotted by our Siege Ballistas, which is, you know, really good. Um, so the only thing I really have to worry about is that, you know, with the Chinsel, we do a attack a little bit slower. So, you know, maybe we need to try and get some attack speed back. Um, I mean, there are a few ways to do that. Uh, picking up the Drill Neck did help since it gave us 8% more attack speed, or increased attack speed, but there are other ways as well. So what I've also done is I've totally spec'd out of... Um, crit chance not totally i guess since these damage nodes also have crit chance but these melee crit chance or bow crit chance that we had originally i spec'd out of it instead since we don't have um lionized glare anymore i picked up resolute techniques which would give us uh 
basically 100% accuracy. However, we cannot crit anymore. Um, so that's why I had taken out crit chance. And with the points that we had gotten back, which were four points, I believe, um, I took... What did I take? I believe I took a jewel socket. I took a jewel socket that gave me a little bit more attack speed. Gave me 13% increased damage. Um, and the idea is I want to replace this rain of splinters and I want to move it over here. I want to buy another lionized fall and put it over here and then I can get this cluster for just a little bit more damage. Um, and then once we get this damage, I think we'll be done. I'll probably look, be looking at this health node as well as this health cluster right here with the chaos resistance. Um, I did pick up Sentinel. Someone did recommend I do that. And the reason I picked up Sentinel is that I get... 10% resistance as well as 24% uh, armor, pretty much. Evasion and armor, I suppose. And since we have the Formless Inferno, the 10% fire resistance counts as another 10% armor. So basically, this node gave us 34% armor. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty efficient right there for one passive point. So we picked up that as well. So now outside of it, or in a map... Um, with determination aura we have 14,000 armor which equals to around 56 percent uh physical damage reduction i also equipped um a molten shell to cast on damage taken so with the molten shell active we have somewhere around 16,000 armor that's a pretty good spot to be at um unfortunately our leech isn't as good as they'd like it to be uh, so when we do take you know a lot of burst damage it does take us a while to leech it all back um but overall, overall, it's pretty good, I think. Um, I'm, I'm really liking the Formless Inferno for our build. I think it makes, it just synergizes so well, especially since we were going for an ar armor build to begin with. We have a lot of strength. Uh, specifically, we have almost 350 strength. Um, so the Formless Inferno also takes 8% of physical damage taken as fire damage, which means that, you know, we already have... 76% fire resistance. We have more, we have nodes that gave us 1% max resistance. Um, so already, you know, 8% of the physical damage we're taking um, is, re is, is resisted by 76%, right? So we only take 24% of that, you know, 8%. The, the rest of the 82% that we're taking um, it gets mitigated further by our armor. And, you know, so I hope everyone's aware that, you know, if you have armor, the biggest problem with armor is that if you take really big hits, armor actually doesn't do much. Um, so it's only when you take the small hits that armor is really effective. And since we are reducing the amount of physical damage we're taking by 8% already, it really does make, uh, uh, you know, the physical damage we take become a lot more sort of, it, it makes our armor a lot more efficient. Um, so there's a lot of synergy going on between our skills and our equipment, and I'm really liking that, you know? Whereas last league, we were just focusing on, oh, I need damage, let's pick up some damage nodes, oh, I need, you know, whatever. Um, I, I need more armor, like, let, let's, let's pick up a couple armor nodes. Now we have equipment that really synergizes as well. Oh, I can get more resistance? Oh, holy crap, all this resistance all of a sudden translated to more armor, right? Um, so stuff like that, all, all these different conversions, uh, it's, it's making a very big deal for us. Um, and honestly, I'm just I'm really liking the build. I'm really liking the path that it's going. And I hope that, you know, we don't die. Because I do want to try and progress as far as we can. Um, now, I did get new boots as well. These boots over here, as you can see, they're evasion boots. Whereas previously, I believe I had 30% movement speed boots with armor. However, because we have 43 fire resistance... Um, on these boots, I crafted dexterity on it. So the 30 dexterity allowed me to get rid of one of these big dexterity nodes. So that's another point saved. And actually, I can actually refund this point as well, which gives me one extra point. And I can use that for, I suppose I can start going here, but let's get some more HP just in case. Ah, I want more damage though. No, let's get HP. That's more important. So, so yeah, I mean, our tree is getting, like, much more efficient, and I'm really happy about that. And really, I do have to thank, you know, the viewers, you guys who watch, who leave comments and give me advice. Like, you know, I, I've been playing for a while, but I'm still a noob. 
when it comes down to it. I don't understand enough mechanics, and I don't pay attention to the mechanics. So when you guys, you know, I, I don't co I don't consider you know backseating at all. When you guys, you know, are are leaving really, it's really constructive uh, comments um, that it does real uh, like it really does help out. I'm serious. Um, so thank you guys for that. You know. Um, Overall, you know, all the help, all the love that you've been giving this whole season, uh, it's accumulated to this character to the point, you know, where we're 82 now in the hardcore league. It's been a month since the league has started, and we're going, we're going pretty strong, I think. I was pretty worried, maybe two or three episodes about, or two or three episodes ago about our damage. You know, I was thinking, oh, maybe we won't even be able to get to like, you know, tier eight, tier nine maps because we just don't have the damage. But now I'm feeling a lot better. Like it, it feels like we have a lot more damage going for us, um, and that is that's just really good, I think. Now let's be careful here. What kind of map is this, or what kind of breach? Old toll. Okay. My mana is gone. I think we're good. Are there any hands? I remember there were. Here's one. I believe there's another one over here. I swear to god I saw it. Ah, oh, I missed it! It's right here, I think. Damn it. Oh well. Let's pick up some of this stuff. I cannot carry this. Another splinter. Is the bow any good? Nope. Let's make some space right here. There, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, I we're we're going strong. I guess that's where I'm trying to get. Like the TLDR is, thank you guys, all your help. Really, you know, it does help. It's not just you know blank words. Um, I am paying attention to what the comments are saying, and they actually make a di big difference for our character because they're still so much room for our character to get better at this point though i think this uh, this bow is you know at its limit um probably we're not going to be changing bows anytime soon chinsel probably was the is the best decision at this point in time until we get like a crazy harbinger bow or something like that um even then since we're not going crit anymore and we're going resolute technique uh is a harbinger better i'm not sure um but if you roll a super good rare bow, it, it does have a lot of damage. The 100% more bow damage at close range is a big deal. Um, and probably the only time where we can't use it, utilize it properly is when we fight bosses which somehow are resistant to stun or have a huge life pool and are running around, um, you know, avoiding the close range modifier and killing our totems and dodging our attacks, stuff like that. But we probably won't be there for, you know, at least another 20 episodes. So that's at least a month. We'll be good for at least another month. Speaking of, you know, the time frames and stuff. Um, I was thinking, you know, if we want to get anywhere even close to completing our challenges, an, ep an episode a day might not be enough. I'm thinking maybe we have to force ourselves to try and play at least two episodes a day. Um... Now, to some people, that might not seem like much, but to me, that is a lot more time. You know, uh, I've been, you know, once you once you get older, you know, there's there are a lot more responsibilities that you have to take care of. Things get a lot more busy. Um, so hopefully, I'll have time to do two episodes a day, and I'm definitely going to try my darndest. But uh, you never know, right? You never know. Um, but for now, I, I think starting on, on Monday next week, We'll be going back to our old two episodes a day schedule. Um, that way we can do a lot more maps, get a lot more progress done. And that way we can de dedicate one day or one episode to doing a Xana map plus a couple other maps. And then the next episode will be dedicated to just pure you know, map challenges and stuff like that. So that's, that's the goal um, basically for this weekend and for the next couple days. Um, try and build up enough of a back enough of a backlog so that we can you know just get more stuff done um and uh and you know try to get a six link or something like that this bow the only thing that we can do to it now is try and six link it that's the only thing we're going for 
the gloves, the boots, uh, probably can take another upgrade. The rings are kind of okay, but at the same time, they need help as well. Um, basically, all of our jewelry is... It's like okay, but not the greatest, you know? Like this amulet, we could definitely have a better implicit modifier. Um, spell damage, we don't need that. Attributes, yes, we do need that. And elemental resistances are nice, some life, some damage. It has most of the stuff that we need, um, but we can definitely optimize all this stuff. Uh, so maybe we can go look out, uh, go back on the market and start looking for new items that, you know, maybe we can trade up for. Um, that's probably how we're going to play it. Or we just, you know, hold out until our build starts feeling really weak. And then that's when we start buying things and hope that, you know, in between that time, um, we find some decent items. That's also a way to go if we want to play the more self-found route. Um, and maybe that's that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm a little lazy. I don't actually want to go out to the market and be forced to buy stuff. Uh, not that it's a bad thing or anything. It's just it takes time that apparently those five minutes I'm too lazy to spend. And yet I'm okay with, you know, spending 30 minutes testing out this chinsel build. Whatever. So as you can see, we're still taking quite a bit of big hit. Like, when we take big hits, they still do a lot of damage. Um, so that's something that we still have to be very careful of. 47 monsters remaining. I'm not going to go out of my way to look for them. Let's just call this map a completed... Oh, complete Master Mission Xana. Excuse me? Master missions. That's a challenge, right? Oh, six out of five. So we've done all of these already. Okay. Learn anything new. We're good. Does she have any new unaided maps? Tier six is fine. May I'll buy the tier six unaided. Okay, let's deposit some of these maps. We have a tier four phantasma. I don't think we've done that before. So we can save that. We have a tier 3 channel, and we have a tier 6, uh -huh. tier 6 thicket. Okay, and let's sell all the stuff we found. So yeah, I guess the next focus is really six linking the chin soul and then uh, just upgrading everything else. I really wanted to get a black, uh, brass dome, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, looking at our chest armor, it's actually pretty okay. Like I'm pretty happy with how it is. Overall, most of our gear, I'm pretty happy with how it is. These gauntlets, you know, aren't that good. Um, same with like, you know, the boots and the amulet. The helmet can't be changed, quiver can't be changed, weapon can't be changed. So the top three slots here, you know, are locked in probably for a long time, at least until the foreseeable future. Um, but everything else, you know, it's 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 up in the air, like the George Clooney movie. Um, so if we find something better, we'll definitely go and replace it. What's the time? It's currently 18 minutes, so I have time for one more map. I can do this Acid Lakes. Elemental Equilibrium. Monsters can avoid poison, blind, and bleed. That's that's okay. So Acid Lakes should be pretty easy. And we can kind of just blast through it. Um, and that's really the goal with all the maps, really, right? Now, I, I've seen some Reddit threads where people were like, you know what, I've been like really efficient with my Atlas, I've been running just strands and reefs and whatnot, um, and that's the way to go when it comes to optimizing the Atlas, and I, do, and I, like, I concur, I agree that uh, that's the way to go, however, I think our goal is still to reach, what, what is it, 126 out of 126 objectives completed? Um, simply because we've never done it before. So we might as well try it once and then next league maybe we'll try for a more optimized atlas. Someone at the beginning of the league had asked me whether I was going to try to do anything with it or not. 
And my answer at the time was no, definitely uh, nothing. And I'm still of that mindset. However, I wish I knew enough to do something. Basically, I wanted to, you know, play the Atlas to the point where I can experience all the maps and know exactly what maps I like absolutely hate and which ones I absolutely love. I don't just want to follow a guide. Um, so with that said, in order for us to do that, uh, we're really going to need to have to figure out what each map does on our own, which definitely is not going to be an easy task. Now, if you take a look with Molten Shell and without any flasks, well, actually, no, it doesn't. We don't have Molten Shell activated. So, like I said, I was saying, like, with Molten Shell, we're sitting at around 16,000 um, armor, which is really good, I have to say. However, for some reason, even, like, once we take big hits from bosses, it's still a significant amount. Um, and that's not to say, or that's not to mean that, oh, maybe we need more armor. We have a Basalt Flask, we have a Granite Flask. When we pop both of those, we have 32,000 armor, which is... You know, a lot different. That's 90% mitigation right there. Even, uh... Basalt Flask adds 20% additional, huh? But yeah, that's a lot of mitigation, but we're still taking damage, so... That just shows, you know, when we take big hits, the armor just really doesn't too, do too much. Gotta be careful there. It seems we're okay. And we're blasting through relatively quickly. I wouldn't say this is the quickest. I think we were doing a Xana map the other day that was, you know, a little bit faster than this. But, uh... It's not a bad spot to be at, I have to admit. Really liking how this new build is going. Uh, sure, the monsters that are further away, um, we have a lot more trouble killing. However, the things that are close, due to the fact that we're summoning totems close by, uh, are clearing very quickly, and that's exactly what we want. Um, so, I mean, in a way, we've inc increased our clear speed, we've increased our overall DPS, and unless you are a yellow or a boss, you're probably not going to get stunned. Instead, you'll just die really quick. And uh, I'm perfectly okay with that. And still, they're still getting stunned, actually, when you look at it very closely. But I have to make sure to pop my flask every time. There's no point in stunning them when they're just going to die in two or three hits anyways, right? I guess that's the mentality. What's the point of giving you all these status effects if you're just going to die before, you know, it even adds up? Like, I can't perma-stun anything, but there's no need to perma-stun anything because by the time they get into, like, that perma-stun loop, they're probably dead already. <sighs> Cartographers. Ooh, this is a good one. That's actually a really good... A really good strong box. Here's one of those times where we might want to consider... Oh, actually, if you use... Oh, it's only on a ring, shield, or amulet. I want to use the alchemy on this thing. Let's go back and sell. Need a map? And then we can go pick up a couple orbs. Good luck okay. your maps. Let's get an elk, a couple scours. Let's try elking it. Additional items, additional magic items. I don't like it. Again. I don't like it. Again. Okay, now I like the first one better. One additional item, one additional rare item. Contain, can, uh, contained items have 18% quality. That's good enough for me. So this should actually be a pretty nice box. It should be. Uh, a tier 4, 18% unID'd. And then some superior tier 3s. That's that's okay, I think. 
that's enough to be happy about. Is it worth, what was it, two scours or three scours and like three elks? Well, maybe. The superior maps do make a difference. You get 18% increased item quantity. And we got an unID'd, you know, graveyard map. So that all has quite a bit of potential to be good. At the very least, it should make us... Each map should at least make up, you know, for one scouring and one alchemy lost. We got, what, four maps? Four or five maps out of it? We'll get at least an alchemy back from it. So in a way, we broke even. A little better than even, really. At the same time, is our is our time worth any money? Sure it is. I just don't know how much. Oh, I almost ran into the bears like an idiot. Okay. Let's just continue, you know, with our wave clearing ways. Looks like this is a dead end. Or not dead end, but the area looks to be widening. There is a breach. Okay. Let's open up the breach. We should be fine. But you never know, right? Things could go real bad. Are there any hands around? Here's one. Let's kill some yellows. I want to. I want to kill the blues and yellows. So let's try for that. Gotta kill some rares. All right. If we can kill at least one rare within a within a you know breach, I think I would be pretty happy. We got some splinters too. <sighs> so that's all really good. Um, so I could enter the boss room right now. We haven't fully explored this area yet. So let's finish doing that first. And then we can uh, fight the boss. Okay. I find that I'm getting hit a lot more re recently. And not only am I getting hit a lot more, I'm getting hit by like big hitting creatures a lot more. That's something to be scary about or to be scared about. Like, each hit always chunks me for like a third of my HP. That's not cool, man. Okay, here's the boss. Or soon will be the boss. Seven, three, two... Okay, one monster remaining. So last guy left. The boss is the bow guy. Okay, well, we just have to stun lock him. And then we can get him. All right, that was easy. I cannot carry. This. So yeah, like stun build still works, even if we're not exactly stunning. 
we're kind of stunning. Only when we do enough damage. Okay. Let's take this back to base. So now we've completed uh, Acid Lakes. Mini Mosa wants a rapid decay. This guy's laggy. What can oh, I do? Here he is. Thank you, Soon Soon. All right, let's you finish by selling all of the stuff we found. Okay, and then. Putting the currency away. Putting some cards away. And then maps. We have a bunch of tier ones. Oasis. Oasis is here. Crystal ore. Marshes. And then graveyard. Seems I don't have a graveyard map in here. Okay. And another villa. Um overall not too bad of a day. Still getting used to, you know, basically a new build for us. Um, since we're playing it differently. Instead of Lion Ice Glare, we're using Chinzel. Um but yeah, still getting used to that. We're now sitting at 21 bonus objectives. So the objective we've created earlier this week of having 20 objectives by the end of the week is completed at this point. Um, we're doing one a day. So maybe next week, let's sort of push for 30 objectives completed by next week. And which means, you know, we'll have to do at least two maps every day to catch up. Or maybe two maps in two of the days that I'll be playing. We're getting there, you know, we're starting to complete all the tier fours. How many tier fours are left? One tier four map. Oh, this is a tier five. One tier four map. A two tier fours. There's like two or three tier. <coughs> Excuse me, two or three tier fours left that we have to work on. Um, but once we're done with that, you know, it's on to the tier five. So we're slowly progressing in terms of the map pool. So I'm pretty happy with that. What can um, I do for you? Our masters, you know, Haku's level seven. Elrion's going to be level seven, level seven soon. Verici, you know, he's he's chugging along. He'll make it there. So overall, pretty happy with the character. Um, hopefully, we'll get enough challenges to do Uber Isaro soon enough as well. Uh, but there's there's still a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline and let's just let's just not die Anyways, that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did as always you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more updates in the future Otherwise keep in touch guys. I'll see you guys next time uh, Soon soon